Okay, now I want to talk briefly about the cyclic control. Uh, this is a Robinson cyclic, which is very different from all the other helicopters I've ever seen. On most helicopters, the cyclic would come out of the floor between your legs, uh, and it would put your handle between your legs. Well, what Robinson has done is that they have put the cyclic on a teeter post, um, and then the handle is still right between my legs when I'm flying, uh, which is normal, which is why it's easy for me to go from a Robinson to a, you know, a Long Ranger. Um, but the controls are actually fed in to one position. And what's neat about that is that if the dual controls are in, as they were in my uh, video about auto rotations that you saw me do with Trevor, um, that just connects to the end. That little cap comes off and uh, the other controls get fixed in there. And um, then the post, if, if the other person is flying, then the controls go down to him or her. And uh, my, my stick then is way up here where it's out of my way. And that's the way the, the cyclic works in a Robinson. And, um, you know, people say, oh, it's hard to use, blah, blah, blah. And guess what? It ain't hard to use. Um, you get used to it really, really, really quick. So that's not an issue. So on the cyclic control, I may as well mention what's on here on a Robinson. Um, this switch turns the hydraulics on and off. Um, this switch will let me toggle through my radio frequencies. Uh, so I've got nine presets, which I actually don't even have set on this helicopter. But if I tap that nine times, it would take me through all nine of them. And then this one switches on my radio from the uh, current frequency to the, uh, the one that's sitting in standby. So these are radio controls. Uh, this is for the hydraulic. And then on the side here is my... Um, my machine gun button, that's really not my machine gun button, it's my radio button. I would push that radio button when I want to talk on the radio. So that's what's on the handle for it. You see the sign says no low G pushovers because we cannot do aerobatics in this helicopter. If you do push the cyclic forward, that's a low G pushover and that will uh, possibly cause um, mass bumping, which is a very bad thing that you don't want. It could cause the blades to come off. Who wants that? nobody. Okay, so the way that this thing works, it's uh, right now it's got the friction on. The friction knob is down here and I will loosen it up because I don't want to be forcing against the friction. And uh, now when I move it, you will see the, the way it moves in the, um, on the blades. It's going to change the pitch of the blades depending on their position in the, um, in the rotation. So the way I show you now is going to be different than the way they look in a, in a moment so, because I'm going to have to get out and um, uh, move the blades and then, and then redo it. So uh, let's, uh, let, me, let me show you first. So I am, uh, if I want to go forward, uh, what this does is it, it uh, changes your direction of uh, flight. So if I want to go forward or if I want to go faster, I push the stick forward. It changes the pitch of my blades in such a way that it will tilt the rotor disc forward. Uh, if I want to go backwards or slow down or stop, whatever, I go back, uh, left or right. And you could be on any angle. You could be any angle. I'm going around now. I'm stirring the pot. This is something that we do in our pre-flight before starting the engine to make sure we have full motion on the um, cyclic. And this is all in the video of the blades right now. Okay, so I'm putting this back in the neutral position. Um, I'm going to put the friction back on, although I don't really know why I need to do that. We're not going anywhere. They're not spinning. And I'm going to get out, move the blades, and then I'll come back in and uh, do that again. Okay, so I've moved the blades. Uh, the way I move the blades is I turn the tail rotor. They're all connected. So you've got a slightly different angle here. Well, let's move them a little bit more. I just looked in the camera to take a peek. All right, there we go. That's probably pretty good. So when I move uh, the, the cyclic now, you will see the difference. Okay, I gotta close the door. Okay. Okay, so I have uh, moved the blades 
uh, so that we'll see, hopefully see a difference. And I'm going to go forward, backward, neutral again, right, left, neutral again. And I forgot to release the friction, which is pretty dopey of me. Pushing against the friction, no wonder it's so heavy. Uh, and then I'm going to stir the pot. So we're going all the way around. I should mention here that the uh, cyclic and the collective have hydraulic assist, which makes them very, very light in flight. And that's back to neutral. So that's the uh, cyclic. Okay, I'm uh, flying now, and I want to talk about the, the uh, cyclic. I'm going to talk about the cyclic control. And um, this is part of my series on um, helicopter flight controls. So I am cruising along in straight and level flight. And uh, the cyclic on a Robinson is a single stick. You should be able to see it in my front-facing camera, which is on super wide view. Makes me look like I'm 400 pounds. I'm not. Um, but it's a single stick. You might not be able to see the base of it. And then it's got a like a teeter-totter on the top. And I've only got half the controls in my controls. I don't have anybody flying on the other side. But if I had someone else flying, there would be a stick coming out the top here. And then they would be able to take it down to their level. Um, on any helicopter, when you're flying, um, for the best control, you want to be able to rest your hand uh, on your leg or your arm on your, your knee. And that gives you the best control. And um, I'm going to close this vent a little bit. Oh, a little bit chilly in here today. Okay. So uh, that's what I've got. I've got my hand rested here. Now the cyclic control is very, very, very sensitive. So it doesn't take much to make uh, the helicopter turn. Um, and that's what the cyclic does, is it changes the um, direction of the, the rotor disc as a whole. So it does that by uh, changing the pitch of the blades uh, individually, and that uh, tilts it in the, um, the direction that you want to go. So right now I'm going forward, and so it's tilted a little bit forward, and that's giving me uh, forward speed. If I wanted to go faster, I could push it a little bit more forward. Now that's going to do two things. It's going to get some more speed up, but it's also going to start a descent, which I don't want. So I have to bring a little collective in so I don't come down and hit these wires. Um, if I wanted to slow down, same thing, except I'd be pulling backwards, and again, that's going to make me also climb, and I don't want to do that, so I'm going to reduce the collective a little bit. And I also have to give it some pedal, I'm feeling that now. A lot of the stuff I do is so automatic, I don't really think about it. Um, I just tell, my brain says what I want to do, and the helicopter just does it at this point. And that's how it gets when you fly, you know, when you drive a car. It's the same traffic, six, two, five, three, okay, uh, so it's beautiful autumn three, colors three, here. One, two. One, uh, this area here is called Fancher Heights. It's uh, in the suburb of uh, East Wenatchee. And that area there, you can see, you might be able to see the big hangar over there. Uh, that's where Fancher Field is, and that's where the historic uh, landing of uh, Miss Vidal was. It was right out here somewhere. It's all of course gone. The hangar still exists though. Um, that's got nothing to do with this. And I don't know if you noticed me turning, but I did, and I didn't even think about it, and of course I didn't narrate it, so let me do it again. Um, again, the controls, very, very little input required to make a turn, so I'm going to lower the sky. So for example, if I wanted to make a right-hand turn, I would pull the stick a little bit to the right. Now, if you're looking carefully, it might look like I'm really not doing anything, but I am pulling it a little bit to the right. Um, in a helicopter, you don't want to make any really, really abrupt control inputs, especially with a two-bladed system. Um, that can cause something called mast bumping, which is a very bad thing. So all your control inputs should be really um, smooth, and it doesn't take much to turn. We'll go back to the left again, so I'm going to turn. And again, I'm pushing that stick just a tiny bit. And I'm getting a nice turn going here. I've got, uh, see, 30 degrees already. So, and that's that's how the cyclic works. It basically, uh, you move the cyclic in the direction you want to go, and it, and it changes your direction. Forward to go faster, backwards to go slower, or even to back up if you're at a stop. And I'm gonna turn again to the right. Uh, this is the Columbia River down here. I really didn't want to come up this far because this little canyon here becomes kind of a wind tunnel. I'm getting tossed around a little here. 
So that's, uh, let's see what else could I say about this, the uh, cyclic. Uh, if you are an airplane pilot and you want to try flying helicopters, you will find, uh, you'll think that the cyclic is impossible because it really takes very, very little input to do anything. And you will over control in the beginning. It's probably the hardest thing to master. But once you get the feel for it, it's, it's all good. And um, I don't uh, have any, uh, I don't have any problems with it. Um, again, I don't really think about it. I've had passengers fly with me and they've said things to me like, um, I see you're, we're moving, we're turning, we're going different places and I don't see you doing anything. Um, and that's because the inputs are so small. Um, uh, one thing I want to mention about this is it is a teeter-totter. It's not this that's controlling the helicopter. It's the pole that it's attached to. Uh, so my hand on this is changing this pole. And by doing that, I'm, I'm changing the direction of the controls. And that is uh, the cyclic. Wenatchee traffic 6253 Alpha on final for runway 12. Now I'm sure I will, will have forgotten something, so make sure you read the comments uh, for this video to see what I forgot. And also if you have any questions, uh, by all means ask them. And uh, I'll try to address them there. And I appreciate you watching. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click the sub click. Let's try that again. If you want to see more videos like this, click the subscribe button and then turn on that little bell and it'll notify you every time there's something new. And I usually try to release two videos a week. I've been slacking off lately, but I'll be picking up again. Sometimes I get a little burned out. So um, that's it. Traffic rise at 2159, taxi on the turnaround for Wenatchee. Turn away 1, 200 traffic in the area, please finish. And Wenatchee area traffic helicopter 7534 Delta is over east Wenatchee. Uh, we're inbound landing, we'll be looking for you.